the R video tutorial on susceptible, exposed, infected, recovered, and mortality model. So this is in a sequence where we've looked at other models that where we slowly built this model. And notice I didn't actually update my D on this, or some people will put an M. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a model that we've used before. Now, I think it's in part one. Here we're just going to try to add in mortality. We're not worried about all the transitions between everything. Uh, as, as you know, notice that we had transitions from going from being exposed directly to recovered. And the reason we don't want to put that in here is our data doesn't match that. And that'll be harder to estimate parameters like that. So I'm going to clean out some parameters that I don't need at the moment. I don't need these. But I do have another compartment or state to be in, which I'm going to call D0. So off, initially, we're going to have zero deaths associated with this disease because we're after the COVID-19 sort of data. And we want to make sure that our model matches our data. And that's one of the big tricks here is, is that most people want to make the most complex and realistic model possible, but the data doesn't match it. So what they will do is they will go off and look for other data. Here, I just want to try to see if we can get the data to fit this directly. So we first need to just have a model that matches up with our data. So these are our initial deaths. If I can spell it, and I spelled initial wrong here, which is common. All right, so now I need to add in some extra information here. So I have my recovered, so I have alpha, I have gamma, and I have beta, alpha, beta, gamma, right? Now what I need to add is, is another compartment for D, and there's going to be a parameter associated with it. So my number of columns now becomes five because I now have five states they could be in or compartments. And I'm going to have to come up with a rate, and this is the rate of mortality. And I'm going to start it off at, let's say, 100. One in 100 people will die from this disease. Now, this is just my guess at this at the moment. This does not mean that that's true. That doesn't mean that I'm an expert on this. Just a guess. That way we can see how this affects the dynamics because we're going to have another group here. All right, so we have D0. Again, we're going to do this little max trick. I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to put in here D0N, which I haven't made yet. And then here we're going to add in our ADA. Okay, so ADA times the infected. Okay, these are the people who are sick. So that means we have to subtract them out of the people who are sick. Okay, so keep that in mind. We have to subtract these people out from the people who are sick in order to keep our accounting correct. So we move this up here, and everything should be good there because we're taking... Wait, do we get them? Nope, I put them in the wrong place. So this is fine. They actually come out of here, right? They come out of the infected. It's easy to make mistakes in this. That's why I leave this stuff into the videos because a lot of people say, oh, it looks real easy when someone else does it. And it does look easy when someone else does it. But sometimes you realize, wait, I have to really think about what I'm doing here. Okay, so the infected, so people will come into the group. Then we're going to have people who are going to leave the group. They're going to go to being recovered. And then we're going to have the people who leave the group, but they have unfortunately died. So... We're going to need to put in here our D0N, which is D0. And then we're going to need to store this off. So we're going to have the same thing here, out1, I5. And here is D0 is what we're storing there. We're going to have to come down here and we're going to add in another line, which will demonstrate how the deaths accumulate, essentially. Because once you moved, or once a person moves to the state, they do not come back out. So we're going to call this black. And I'm going to give a different color here to my initial, and maybe I'll call them purple. Okay. Now, this should all run, and this should take, this is our picture from last time. I re-ran this for just our four states that we had before. Now we have a fifth state, so let's run this and see what this looks like just with these values. So if I highlight all this and run all this, I'm going to get a different picture. Okay, 
Now, notice how the picture has changed some. Notice we now have this other category, D, which are the deaths, which are in black. And it comes up and it levels off. Okay, It's never going to go down because people don't exit this. right? People leave being susceptible. That's why it goes down. People leave being exposed. That's why it goes down. Okay, the people leave being infected. That's why it goes down. But people don't leave being recovered, right? So it doesn't come back down. Just to give you some intuition on why this seems like a reasonable model. Okay, so now this model here is something that we can actually line up with the John Hopkins data for COVID-19. And that's what we'll try to do in the next video, or at least get the first crack at it. All right, see you there.